Hey everyone, welcome to week 67. Today is day five. This is Friday. This is our last day on our further week. This is our last opportunity to push even further than the last four days. So we'll see how we're going to do. Remember next week, new theme. We're going to be here. Love you. Okay, let's get started. This is day five. This is our last day of our further week. And... You know, if you think about it, if this is the last day of the Pushing Further week, this should be our most daring painting. If everything went according to plan, then by day five, you know, this is what I was thinking, by day five, because come on, five days of painting where you're pushing, I mean, it's going to be surprising not to paint like Rembrandt, so... <laughs> But I was thinking, okay, by day five, I'm going to have so much courage accumulated in my body. You know, there's going to be so much energy that all these prior exercises have provided me with that day five is going to be cake. Day five, I'm going to be painting like a completely new painter. I'm going to be a painter completely different from the one that started the week. Those were my real <laughs> expectations. <laughs> That's what I was actually thinking that would happen. And of course, I couldn't be more wrong about the evolution of this week. And uh, it was very humbling. Day one, after day one, I was like, yeah, this is not going to go according to plan. This is not going to go like I thought it would, like I envisioned it would. And we talked a little bit about it yesterday, but, you know, it's just not easy. It's not meant to be easy and I've been painting for 25 years, and for some reason, I still have this dumb expectation that at some point, at some point, things are going to get easier. And things don't get easy. No, if anything, they get just more convoluted. I mean, you get some sense of clarity in terms of a bunch of things, but other things become so attractive, and we kind of get into our heads, and we start almost like creating problems, like new problems. <laughs> you know, all those fundamental things... Maybe they're not as hard as they were when we started painting. But now we start creating all these abstract issues, problems where there were none. And bottom line is that it's always going to be tough. So I realized that super quickly, I think. And even though I made some adjustments, I mean, I didn't want to force myself to do something ridiculous with my painting. That's also an important thing to note about this week. Like... It wasn't just about going nuts with painting. You know, it wasn't just about flinging painting onto a piece of paper and just seeing what happens. I mean, those things are fun. Don't get me wrong. There's a time and a place for all those things. And honestly, those things can be super fun. But that's not what I was looking for. I was trying to push, but I was trying to push within my own limits and expectations and hopefully push towards the painter that I want to be. In my mind, there just wasn't room for me trying things out just for the sake of trying them out. Like, it has to make sense. For something to have a lasting effect on us as painters, it has to make sense. It has to mean something. If not, it just becomes like an exercise. And we could do thousands of exercises, pointless exercises in painting that are not going to make us better painters. We can do so many things that we don't connect with that are going to have no effect, no tangible effect on our painting practice. So I had to be intelligent about trying to do this right. And I realized that trying to make it right meant that I just couldn't bullshit myself. Like I just couldn't do something for the sake of making it look cool or for the sake of being superficially bold. No, it, it, it had to be me. It always had to be me. Underneath, I have to be present in all these paintings. So what I discovered is that for me to be there, for my essence to be present in these paintings, I had to cling on to something. I had to grasp something that was important for me, that was relevant for me. And I realized it had to be form because I love form. I absolutely adore painting form. I think I've mentioned this before, but I think it's pretty evident when you look at my paintings. I may be a very brushy painter. I think that, you know, if I could describe myself as something, I'm very brushy. I mean, if I think about being structured or being sculptural, I think I'm both of those things too. 
But I would say that I am a brushy painter. Like above those other things, I'm a brushy painter. So even though there's more fundamental aspects of painting that could reinforce the idea of form, uh, far more than just being a brushy painter, I feel, I still love form. I adore form. I love when things turn in space. I love when we can create a sense of atmosphere, a sense of place, when you can depict a universe where you can sensibly describe the three-dimensionality of form. Oh, I love that. You know, again, form turning in space. Ugh, absolutely love it. So I leaned on to this idea of form, this concept of form that I love, and I started thinking, okay, if I start from the fundamentals of form and I try to simplify them, that's going to make my job a little bit easier because I'm going to push in the sense of I'm trying to push shapes in order to get them closer to their more abstract nature. So yesterday is a perfect example of understanding the contour of that portrait and the surrounding areas too, you know, moments of the body too. But essentially that portrait is a rectangle. I really wanted to push this idea that it was a rectangle. But there is a point where just painting a rectangle feels weird and abstract. It feels flat. So if I'm trying to still hold on to this idea of form turning in space, of the three-dimensionality of form, of volume, then this very abstract flat shape just doesn't quite make sense within the painting, within the picture. I realized that if I could balance this idea of simple shapes with edges, with edge control, then it would become a little more organic. So yesterday's portrait of Willard was exactly that, was just this effort in trying to reach a balance between all these very simple, very basic geometric shapes and hoping that they could live alongside this idea of the modeling of form. These forms that were developed, probably the one that I developed the most in the portrait was the nose because I absolutely love noses. I think they're amazing. And I was hoping to reach, you know, an equilibrium between those two and that it would feel right. It's not just about pushing things so much that the painting doesn't make sense. It's about finding that beautiful, perfect balance between those elements, between the elements that configure the painting. So edge work was super, super important. And if you ask me right now, like who I can think of if I think about edge work, oof. I mean, off the top of my head, and if I can go from very sharp to like looser, not super, super loose, but looser, I would say if you're thinking sharp, it's got to be Catherine Kehoe. I think she's brilliant at very sharp shapes. If you start to break that sharpness just a little bit, just a little bit, Sangram Majumdar is fantastic. I think Sangram's work is just out of this world. He's a terrific painter. He's probably... One of the best contemporary painters out there, for sure. If you start softening those edges up just a little bit and leaving things a little bit more open, I think Peter Van Dyke. Peter Van Dyke is fantastic. So I would say that's a very nice spectrum of contemporary possibilities with painting where you can go from pretty sharp to depicting form that is very much so conscious about its limits, its parameters, but that it feels a little bit more naturalistic and softer, which is Peter Van Dyke's case. By the way, these three painters, and I've mentioned them before, Catherine Kehoe, Sangram Majumdar, and Peter Van Dyke. Oh my God, you can't paint better than that. So I think those three are perfect if we're trying to begin to understand how to deal with uh, edge work. Now, super broken, beautiful edge work. We can think of Alex Konevsky or Anne Gale, but we're not going to that end of the spectrum. Maybe not yet. Maybe. You know, that could be a pretty uh, sweet week. Just broken, open edge work. And uh, both Alex and Anne's work can be just perfect, perfect North Stars for that week. So, yeah, we could do that in the future for sure. Put a pin on that. We're totally going to do that week in the near future. But for now, we're leaning towards the sharper side because I wanted to concentrate a little bit more on the more geometric, abstract aspects of shape and trying to balance that out with the modeling of form. So we kind of tickled that with uh, Mike's portrait, with Mike Mignola's portrait on Wednesday. And, you know, I didn't say it. I forgot to say it. I forgot to mention it on Wednesday. But for sure, a person that I was thinking of just trying to loosen up a little bit 
to try and tackle this uh, this Mike painting was, of course, Mike's work, you know. But I also had Woodrow White in my mind. And I think he's a terrific, terrific painter, fantastic illustrator. We recently bought a book with Danny that he illustrated that I think it's absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous story. It's called uh, We Became Jaguars. Totally recommended. So I thought about Woodrow White for Mike's portrait. And then for Vuillard's portrait, I just went off from his self-portrait, from his super, super simple self-portrait that I found brilliant and adorable. And I was like, okay, this is my starting point. This is how he saw himself. I wanted that to be kind of like my guiding light. And I thought that was absolutely wonderful. And for today, because I was super conscious about edge work, I was like, let me try and channel. I mean, as much as I can, we're totally different painters. But let me try and channel some of the love that I have for Catherine Keogh's painting. But let's paint somebody who is quite different from Catherine Keogh and quite different from myself, which is Alice Neal. I really wanted her to be the subject of my painting. I think she's a fantastic portrait painter. I mean, for sure, she has to be one of the most important portrait painters in American painting history. That to me is a given. And I think I said this at the end of uh, yesterday's video. Her painting is tough for me to understand. I'm not saying that it just flies over my head. I'm not saying that I don't get it. No, of course I get it. When I look at her painting, I can understand the role of color. I can totally understand the role that drawing plays in her paintings, which is super, super important. But when I look at her paintings, I love them and I totally respect them. But I think they go a bit too far for me. When I say this, I'm not saying that okay, this is not for me. Like, this is a little too different. This strays too far from my path. So I'm sorry, but I like it. I respect it, but it's not for me. No, this isn't the case at all. I believe that there's a ton of things that I can learn from her painting. I really, really do. But I also feel that I need to work a lot more to get to a place where it makes sense for me to learn from her paintings. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. But I think that we have to be ready. You know, we can respect and adore other painters' work. But for that work to have incidence on our work, for that work to mean something for our own work, it doesn't mean that just because we want it to be part of our lives, it's suddenly going to magically be part of our painting. No, we have to earn it and we have to work towards it. So there is a willingness inside of me that wants to understand her work. And I totally understand if some of you guys are going like, why do you have to understand her work? Like, if you don't connect with it, put it to the side and check back on it in a couple of years and that's it. And I totally get it. That makes sense. But, but I'm remembering of how I felt about Whistler and how initially when I saw Whistler's work, I was like, ah, Whistler is such an idiot, you know, such a pompous ass. He can't paint like Sargent, so come on. He's not as good or as talented as he thinks he is. You know, that was me. That was very young me just looking at a painter that completely flew over my head. And eventually, I knew that there was something there. And I was kind of at the same point where I am with Alice Neal. Like, I know that there's something there. And maybe, eventually, you know, if I connect with Alice Neal's work, maybe it won't have as much of an impact as the one that Whistler had on me. But I still want to do it. I still think that it deserves my effort because I respect her work so much, because I know how moving her portraits can be. The one thing that it is asking of me is to put in the effort. And I want to do that. So today's painting is not so much about pushing her portrait in that sense, like thinking that I have to do like super crazy things with the manner in which I paint her portrait. No, I think it has to do with pushing in the sense that there are painters sometimes that we know that there's something in there and we know, you know, deep down we know that maybe to understand those painters better, we have to put in hard work on our part. Maybe what we have to do is read about their lives and understand contextually how they created their work. Not just judge a painting by how it's painted because honestly, that's a very important but very superficial way to judge a painting. Yes, you know, maybe there are paintings out there that are fantastically painted. Only the most amazing of painters that will inhabit this earth are going to be capable of painting as beautiful as those paintings. And that's something that we have to respect and celebrate. But, 
but other paintings are equally as amazing and they are asking of us to not judge them by the most obvious of aspects, but to dig in deeper. Digging in deeper means that we have to educate ourselves a little bit more. That's where our effort comes in. And I think that with Alice Neal, I'm going to start paying a lot more attention to how I feel when I see her work, why I feel a certain way when I see her work, where are those moments that move me, how she was able to communicate with such efficacy the humanity that lies underneath her portraits, and most importantly, to understand her contextually, to understand her as an artist of her time. So I'm going to push myself to do that. I think this painting is more of an acknowledgement that I have to look in a little bit deeper. And I think that even if my painting doesn't necessarily reflect her painting, it doesn't mean that her work was inconsequential. I could be a completely different painter and still adore her and respect her. For that to have a lasting effect, for that to have a tangible effect on the artist that I am, I have to work hard. So today further meant exactly that. You know, picking somebody who I know that I like, who I know I gravitate towards. And I didn't want to make it somebody who I easily adore. Like, for example, Louise Dodd. We've spoken about Louise Dodd. She's incredible. Like, for me, no effort has to be put into trying to understand why her work has such a deep impact on who I am. No, she's amazing. I mean, I don't paint like her, but I think she's an absolute genius. I mean... Every time I see contemporary painting nowadays, I'm like, oh yeah, that has Louise Dodd's DNA all over it. She is that huge in today's painting. So for me, she's like super easy. But Alice Neal is tough. So I think it's super cool. And, you know, maybe you guys could, you know, kind of play along and say, you know, who's an artist that has always been, and that's why I described her as enigmatic for me, because I know I'm attracted to her, but I don't understand why. So you guys can pick an artist that has kind of like the same nature that I'm describing with Alice Neal and say, you know what? It's about time that I just read a little bit more about her and try to understand why there is a tiny force, a tiny bit of gravity that's pulling me towards her. The further today was not about painting, but was about just reaching a little bit farther than what I would normally do and acknowledging, okay, Maybe I have to put some time aside to understand a painter that I've always found interesting. So that's going to be it for today. As we say on Friday, Danny and I and Samu and Fer, they were not here this week. They were at their mother's, but, you know, they're always with us in our hearts. We all thank you for letting us be your company during this week, even if it's for 15, 20 minutes a day. And all we ask is that you give us the opportunity to earn your trust and be your company for next week. So next week, new theme. We're going to be here. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>